Hi everyone, my name is Bindu. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn about some dance functions. If you are working with data, you will have so many scenarios where you will have to count the rows of a table in Power BI. In SQL Server or in any database, you will have some functions to count the rows. Even when you are working with Excel, you will have some inbuilt functions in Excel to uh, get the counts of all the rows. Today in this video, we will see what are all the count functions we have and the difference between those count functions in Power BI. So without any delay, let's get started and learn the count functions looking at an example. If you look at my screen, I created some sample data where I have ID, first name, last name, gender, email, IP address and uh, a boolean column which says if the person has driving license or not. So based on this data set, I want to count the number of rows in different scenarios. So uh, let's see what are all the count functions we have and um, how the results of those count functions look like on this data set we have. So firstly, let's see what the count function does. Okay, let's create the new measure here. I'll just give the name as count. Okay, well, so I'm using count function here. So I want to count the ID column here in this data set. I want to count all the ID, um, all the rows in the ID column. I said OK and I'm bringing this uh, count column here and I'll just change it to data label. OK, so my count column. So if I just use the count on ID, ID column, the uh, count I got is 20. So if you look at the table here, there are uh, 20 different IDs. So count 20 is uh, absolutely right. So let's change the column to first name and type. I'm just changing the column name here. I'm changing it to first name. So even now the count is 20 because here in first name we have 20 different uh, first names, right? So we have 20. And let's, let's change this to email. And if you change this to email, the count is 15. Here, the count function, it ignores all the blank and null values. So in this data set, we have diff uh, 15 different email IDs. That's why the count is 15. And now, uh, let's see what happens if we change the column to has driver's license. So here, I'm changing the column name to has driver's license. Okay. And I'm saying okay. Now it gives me an error. This is because count function, it does not give any result. It gives an error if you have, if you are counting boolean value. If the, if the column has a boolean value, if the column has true or false value, then count function is not the one you have to use. For that, if you have to count this, uh, if you have to count the rows in a boolean data type function uh, in boolean data type column then you have to use count a function okay so now let's change this function to count a okay and i'm saying okay here and now see the count it changed to 12 so here in this uh, in this column we have the count as 12 okay so um this count a function you can use it for other data types also if you use it for id as well so if you use it for id you get the count is 20. so the only difference between count and count a function is uh, count function it does not give result if uh, the data column the column data type is a boolean that's the only thing you have to remember here and we covered count function and count a function so what's next if you want to get distinct values of a column, then you use distinct count function. Okay. So here the distinct count based on the ID column is 20. And if you say the distinct column based on email, then the count becomes 16. If here when you when you do the distinct count, it counts the blank values, all the blank values. It counts all the blank values as one. Okay, so 
So you have 15 different emails and one blank value. So the count is uh, 16 for email. The same way you can uh, do it for has driving license as well. Um, so here, uh, um, if you do it for um, uh, has driver's license, the distinct count is three. three. Uh, false, true and one blank value. Okay, this is how uh, it works for distinct count. And now let's see for count blank. Okay, so what does this count blank does? Its name says it counts the blank values in that particular field. Okay, so here we are uh, having, we are checking the blanks for has driver's license field. So let's see what we get. So we have eight blank values in this in this field here. So that's what it says count blank says. So count blank it gives the number of uh, blank rows in that particular uh, field which we have provided. And um, count and if you do distinct count no blank it gives two. That means it's ignoring the blank values and it's giving the distinct count. So here if you look at this, we have two values here, true and false and it's ignoring the blank value. So distinct count, no blank, it ignores the blank value and it gives you the distinct count in that particular field. So this is about distinct no blank, distinct count, no blank. And the next one we'll be talking about is count rows function. Count rows function what it does is so for this count rows function you give the total table as a parameter okay so here the data set is data and that's all you say okay here and it gives you the count so this count rows it gives the total number of rows in that table irrespective of blanks nulls or anything it considers the whole table okay it doesn't it considers the whole table. It's not per individual uh, field or individual column. So if you want to get the total number of rows irrespective of the column, you can use count rows. And, and Microsoft claims that when you just want to count the rows irrespective of nulls or blanks, count rows is much faster because it's not checking individual columns. It just goes through the um, entire table and gives you the total number. So uh, Microsoft claims count rows is much faster. So if you don't want, so if you are not considering the null values or blank values, you can simply use count rows instead of count. So that's about these count functions. We still have count x and count ax functions. Those two are iterative functions. So let's talk about these two functions in the next video in detail. I hope in this video you understood how to use different kinds of count functions you have in Power BI. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe. And see you in the next video with the difference between count x and count ax functions. Thank you.